Well, good day viewers and welcome to another episode of Site Ed. Site Ed, the site educational program designed to educate and enlighten the masses on common ocular disorders. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a disease that is usually found in children. The eye commonly do not have cancers or tumors as we call it but in this particular condition it's about one of the conditions where um, we can actually say that the eye has a cancer growth. So today in this episode we'll be talking about retinoblastoma and again we have in the house someone we have interviewed all the way from the National Eye Center in Kaduna. She will be talking to us on retinoblastoma. She's a consultant ophthalmologist. She's also a pediatric ophthalmologist. That's a special interest. And so, so today she will be talking to us about retinoblastoma. It's my pleasure to um, show us some of the interview excerpts we had while we interviewed um, Dr. Mrs. Amina Hassan. I am Dr. Amina Hassan, a consultant ophthalmologist um, with interest in pediatric ophthalmology from the National Eye Center, Kaduna. Retinoblastoma is the commonest um, tumor in the eye and normally found in children. It can be between the age of zero to three years or more than that. And it can be hereditary or just um, like um, sporadic. That means there's no inheritance in that type of retinoblastoma, but the one that is hereditary, that means the child can inherit it either from the parents or from other family members that have had retinoblastoma. Um, retinoblastoma is a serious problem. It's like a cancer, just like other cancers that we have in other parts of the body. And the most important thing is that if it's detected early, it is curable. People have been cured of retinoblastoma. They've lived up to 90 years in other parts of the world. But it's still a problem for us, especially in this part of the world. Because most of the patients that we have come from very, very poor backgrounds. Some don't have awareness of what the disease is. Some go to places where the people given care do not know what it is. So you find out that they present very late. Most of the patients we see present very late because they don't have knowledge of what this eye problem is. And it can, just like other cancers, it can kill the child. And if they present early, we can cure the child, save the vision, and the child can live a normal life. But most times, uh, people do not come early. <music> Retinoblastoma presents like a cat's eye reflex. That means the way the cat's eye is uh, in the dark, it gives you one glow like this, uh, like a, a reflex. So it's called, called the cat's eye reflex. So that's how it first presents. So sometimes this condition is confused with cataract because you find so many people coming to tell us, no, they told me it's cataract. If they do operation, my child will see. But no, it is not a cataract, it is retinoblastoma. So the most important thing is that the eye caregivers at the primary level, at the secondary level, they should know that any child that presents with what we call a white eye, what we mean by white eye is that there's white patch in the front of the eye or in the black part of the eye called the pupil. It's a cause for concern because it could either be the cancer we call retinoblastoma or, or cataract or any other condition that needs uh, urgent care. If they don't present with the reflex, the cat's eye reflex, they can present maybe with pain in the eye, they can present with blood in the eye, they can present with uh, a deviation of the eye, that means the eye is looking another way, that what we call squint. So sometimes if they present like that, you need to check the back of the eye that there is no growth in that eye. 
And sometimes if it's left not attended to, it comes out as a big, huge thing in front of the eye. Very bad. The child is very sick, all because it has not been taken care of. Depends on the stage it presents. If it's very small in the eye, we can freeze it or, yes, we can freeze it and the tumor will go after some time. But if it, is, it has filled the eye, the best thing to do is to remove the eye. But you find that most patients, when they come, most parents, and you tell them you want to remove the eye, especially if the child is very young or is the first child, even if it's the last child, they don't want that eye removed. And you've told them everything. After some time, they'll come back when the growth has become, has gone beyond the eye, it has traveled to other parts of the body, and then they want you to remove it. But what the best treatment is to remove the eye. Then when we remove the eye, we don't throw it like, just like that in the dustbin. We we'll take it to our other colleagues that will check whether the growth has reached the back of the eye. That is the nerve that connects to the brain. So if it's reached that part, we we'll have to give cancer treatment. Just like other cancers, there are drugs that can treat retinoblastoma. But you see these drugs also have side effects. So before we give them, we we'll have to check the child and be sure that the child can take these drugs. If he needs blood or she needs blood, we we'll have to we'll still check and give blood and then do the treatment. Then another treatment, apart from giving the cancer drugs, removing the eye, is radiotherapy. Whereby we we'll apply like um, rays to the, to the eye to reduce the growth of the eye. Then another, another treatment is which we are not doing here. It's done abroad. Is that you can give the, the anti-cancer drugs through a vein that will reach to the eye and it will make the growth disappear. Okay, I just want to use this model of the eye to demonstrate just to show people where the cancer comes from. From the inside part of the eye. This is called the retina. So the cells of the retina when the eye is being formed. That is where the cancer can arise. So, and if it can fill inside the eye, if it fills inside the eye, it can fill everywhere, sorry, then it can come to the front part of the eye, it can go to the back, it can cover everywhere, it can come to the back of the, this, this is the nerve, which is connected to the brain, so you see, it can spread everywhere. But once it's detected early, if it's a small white thing here, we see it as a small white thing when we look at it, we can be able to freeze it, if we do it so many times, or apply heat to it, then it will disappear. At least we've saved the child and we need to be checking um, the, the child all the time. And the one thing I forgot to mention was that it can affect both eyes, especially in the hereditary type. And the can affect both eyes and it can affect um, a male child or a female child. It's not just um, one sex that it affects. And then the disturbing thing is that um, most of the patients we see come from a very, very poor background. Majority of them. And then they, most of them come late because there's no awareness and they don't have the funds sometimes to even do this treatment. Because for treatment of retinoblastoma, you need certain equipment and machines to diagnose it. That is to know what it is, whether it has spread to other, other parts of the body. Like you, you need the B scan if it's come in the eye. You need the CT scan or the MRI to see. And you see most of the time, all these machines are not available in all hospitals. Most of them are available in the big, big hospitals. And coming to these big hospitals is very, very expensive for most of them. And then retinoblastoma can spread to other parts of the body, like, like other cancers. It can spread to the brain, it can spread to the bone, it can spread to the liver, it can spread to the blood. So you see, when it has done all this, we need other doctors, not just the eye doctor that will come and um, treat this patient. That means we have to look for other doctors the, the hematologist, the pediatrician, the, 
the oncologist, the person that is specialized in treating all kinds of cancers. Well, the form of prevention is because in some of the retinoblastomas, as we said, is hereditary. There's a certain gene that if the parents have, that has affectation. So, counseling on consanguineous marriages, that means if the parents are related, we can counsel them if they've had a child that has had retinoblastoma or a relation that has had retinoblastoma, there's a chance that they could have a child with retinoblastoma. So counseling is very important so that they will know that if they marry, they can have a child with this problem. If the marriage has not taken place, if it's possible to cancel it, it's, it's, it's better. Just like a sickle cell disease, because sickle cell disease is hereditary too. So retinoblastoma can be hereditary. The another counseling is for treatment, because the treatment is very, very, it's, takes a long, long time, takes a lot of, requires a lot of money and understanding between the parents and the caregivers, that is the, the doctors. So anytime they have to be counseled on the, we're going to remove the eye. So you, removing the eye, most of the parents will find it difficult because, okay, if you remove the eye, how is my child going to look? How is he going to look in the society, in the community? Children might be, people might be laughing at him. So you have to counsel them that. It's, we're saving the child's life, not the, the vision. At least the, if the other eye does not have the tumor, the child can be able to survive and he can use the other eye to see. And even if the, the growth has not been, it's not so much in the other eye, it can be treated and the child can lead a normal life. And we can put an artificial eye. Nobody will know that that eye cannot see. You have to counsel them on the side effects of the treatment, the cancer drugs. Because if you give the cancer treatment for the first time and the mother notices that the child has fallen ill, the hair is falling, he's always sick, he's vomiting, she will be discouraged to bring the child for this treatment. The treatment for the cancer, it's either three months or six months. But in most cases, because our own patients in this environment present late, we normally give them the six months treatment, which is better, so that it will kill all the cancer that has escaped somewhere and so we have to counsel this the caregivers of these children for all the time anytime they come they have to be counseled on the treatment and then even the support they need support from their families to support them financially and then another thing I want is for the eye, care, eye caregivers especially in the primary health centers the secondary health centers for them to be able to detect this condition very early, especially at the maternal health centers where children are giving immunization. I think the midwives or the nurses doing this should be educated on how to check the eye for any problem in the child's eye so that they can be treated early. As I said in the beginning, that early detection is the best treatment for such cases. Well, that's it, viewers, on retinoblastoma. It's actually of great concern to us that in this part of the world, many of the patients present very late, at the point where there's really nothing we can do. Um, but in many places, if these patients present very early, we can actually preserve the sight of the child. And the next thing we can also try to do is to preserve the globe, the eyeball itself. But most times when patients come very late, we're actually just struggling to keep the child alive, which oftentimes we may not be able to do because by the time the child presents, the cancer had spread to several parts of the body. So early enough, we don't pray for it, but early enough, if there's any whitish spot in the eye of a child, please take that child immediately to an ophthalmologist or to an eye clinic where proper diagnosis can be made and adequate treatment can be instituted early enough. Thank you very much for staying with us on Side Ed. Keep your question coming in 
our WhatsApp page, on our Twitter, with, on our Instagram, and on our Facebook page. We appreciate every one of you. Thank you.